So at the beginning of 2019, I came across the term, the future of work. And I was like, future of work. I was like, what does this mean, the future of work? I was really curious about it. And I started doing some deep kind of research into it. I took an online course on edX. If you're familiar with it, it's one of those open platforms with MIT and Harvard on a course called Shaping the, future, the Work of the Future, which my buddy here, Deborah, I know she took that course as well, was influential on her. Um, you know, at that time, the whole narrative around the future of work was really simply about AI and automation displacing a large piece of the labor force. And then how can we collectively kind of upskill and preempt, preempt that? But at that point of time, in early 2019, I saw something really different. I was really, really struck with the fact and the idea or the feeling, I should say, that we were moving into this paradigm shift of new ways of working. I could almost see this flexible world of work coming towards us. And I felt like we had once in a lifetime opportunity to kind of really rethink and reimagine the where, how, and why we work. Now, looking ahead, I could see this future of work ecosystem coming off the ground. So just like we have you know, telecom or healthcare or financial services are their own industry verticals. I'm looking at the future of workspace and I could say, all right, well, we've got problems to be solved, customers, investors, builders, and I could see all these new hardware and software solutions and new services, which a lot of people here are building. And I could see all that coming, like that's amazing. But from our point of view, I was like, for us to kind of collectively step into these new ways of working and put all this new technology to use, we have to first collectively agree on what are those new norms standards and behaviors of, of flexible and hybrid work. Like sometimes the things you can't find in a company policy. And we were so used to working traditionally, we knew how to do that, but how do we actually work in a flexible workplace? So that was our jumping off point kind of three plus years ago. And we jumped into a ton of like academic research, market-based research, like talking to monks and astrophysicists. I mean, the whole kind of a gamut to really understand human behavior and what drives us in the world of work. So from that point, we developed a lot of research and a lot of original thought in the form of our proprietary method for how to train people to adopt our model for new ways of working that drive not only the individual, but team performance over the long term. So at some point, hybrid work and flexible work will simply become work. And that's what our goal is. So, to explain a bit more kind of about how we put a model around this and how we go to market, our value prop truly is simply the hybrid work versus the hybrid how. So a lot of companies either independently or they work with workplace strategists, but they understand what their hybrid what is. Their what could be, they're making the decision as a company to move into a remote first environment or they're making a decision to be proper hybrid, which is some kind of days co-located, some, some days are working from home. But what we thought the market opportunity would be, and is coming to fruition now is, but how do you actually do that? You can know what you want to do and you can put that on paper and you can kind of disseminate that to a team, but how do you do it? Like what is this different about working flexibly compared to when we were used to work traditionally? So that's what we've built at Sway. So most simply put, Sway is a B2B learning and development solution for hybrid work mastery at scale. A lot of the premise of all of our work is based around the fact that we think that performance in hybrid, it truly does require a whole new way of thinking and working to collaborate across location and time. So if you can imagine in the built world where a lot of folks here are building tools and technologies and solutions to bring this to life, we're kind of like that team that comes in right before there and helps large companies and large teams walk over that bridge into new ways of working to embrace the new collaboration tools and the new solutions that we're coming up with. So at Sway, we are a team of consultants. And what we do is we partner with a company's L&D team to implement and run training program that delivers what we believe are those skills, techniques, and mindset that hybrid teams truly need to thrive. The way that we work very simply is we deliver workshops that are kind of modular and stackable, which allows us to kind of work with an organization from small up to very big companies. The way that we approach a training program is that we include senior leaders, managers, individual teams, 
and individual contributors together. So we can have one consistent message that scales right across an organization. We are big believers in synchronous learning. So we don't do anything kind of self-serve in our self-made videos. We do things either live in person or in a virtual format. What's also kind of unique about what we thought would be important in this kind of way of training is that we actually train through the language of career and life coaching because that kind of an approach in a room with people, virtual or in person, it really helps people shift their mindset in the moment. Because our take is that this whole move into new ways of working is probably like 50% mindset and 50% skills and technique. And in addition to kind of this, this training methodology, we gather a lot of data before, during, and after. So all of our, our whole approach is very data-driven, which is really valuable to developing good insights for leadership teams and the clients that we work with. So this was the core. We wrote the book, like we literally wrote a playbook um, on hybrid work. And every, our playbook is literally simply a linear series of training and micro-coaching exercises that together ladder and build up to the skills, techniques, and mindset that we use to drive personal, individual, and team performance in a hybrid setting. So just kind of at uh, standing back, that's kind of where we've come from, why we've even begun this work, why we're committed to it, and how we deliver to our clients. I wanted just to share with you, you know, our playbook is extensive. There's a lot in there and there's a lot of pieces that ladder up, but I wanted to bring to you kind of the three main things that we think are the cornerstone of the work that we do and that has the greatest impact we work with folks. The first one is simply by asking a really valuable question. And that is about personal responsibility. Because our take is we really kind of drive this home when we're working with people is that we think that the biggest shift that's happening in this move to new ways of working it's not necessarily where you're deciding to drop your computer. Like right now I'm in a, I'm in a, the yard on 34th street of co-working. Sometimes I'm working from home or a coffee shop. It's not about where you're dropping your computer. It really truly is about personal responsibility. So we ask people point blank, are you opting in to flexible work with the willingness and preparedness for taking on that workplace responsibility that previously rested with the company? And I think a lot of the friction that we're feeling is about this like companies that are unwilling to trust, unwilling to let go is because a lot of the power is shifting to the individual person. So right off the bat, we kind of illuminate that. And we're like, a lot of this is moving on to you as an individual and are you opting in to this kind of responsibility? So once we get people kind of thinking along those lines and we have consensus on this, this is kind of another kind of cornerstone exercise that we run people through. It's what we call the four-part hybrid grid. And this is a lot of new news for a lot of people. So on the right-hand side, we cover what we believe are just the core concepts of the hybrid work language. Co-located work and remote, which are dimensions of location, and sync and async work, which are dimensions of time. So over the course of the last six months, I would say about 60% of the people we work with weren't familiar with sync and async. It was very, very new news for them, which really kind of told us that a lot of people just took their office first way of working and virtualized it, which a lot of us in the call would know is not really what hybrid is or the power that hybrid can have. So we work with people to really unbundle their role into tasks, assess the nature of their work and make decisions around where is their work done best, co-located remote, sync and async. So a really simple, short tool that packs a lot of punch and really is an aha moment for folks that were very traditional workers who think about remapping their work weeks. So we do kind of a bunch of other work in terms of like trust and empathy and reimagining communication and what's different. Um, but the penultimate exercise tends to be this, reestablishing a team's hybrid work week. And this simple grid right here is a lot of where it comes to for us. So we really try to emphasize to folks that, you know, hybrid work is structure, order, and routine, just like work was traditionally. Structure, order, and routine is what we all need to thrive. How do we jive together? How do we reestablish our new workflow that has that kind of hybrid vibe? Um, and this is where we get people to. So we help them understand the nature of collaboration hours versus focus hours. Like as a team, should we set those? Should we carve some time that we're going to actually work together in a collaborative way? 
And what hours, if any, should we just carve out its deep think work? This is my focus work. And can a team get to consensus on what that is? Because even though this is not gonna be written in stone, when people make these decisions, they're owning their own hybrid work week and a team can get to consensus on how they're gonna develop their own workflow in hybrid that's very different from traditional work. And we also kind of help them understand sync and async tasks by day. So you're not guessing. You have your own personally influenced design around your own work week with a hybrid tinge. So that is kind of super quick to run through some of the bigger techniques that have the biggest impact in the work that we do. And the third thing I wanted to walk you through is the data that we gather. So anywhere we go, we're measuring data everywhere we go because we want to not only prove progress, but we also want to understand real time what's really happening with people. So we developed this thing called a tool called the Net Hybrid Score and kind of based on all the research we did over time, we pulled these 10 variables that we believe are independent, but also completely interrelated. And together, they measure the correlation between a hybrid work environment and its ability to allow their people to do their best work. So this particular tool has been a dynamite value to us because it allows us to take a temperature check of where people are real time in their hybrid work environment. Then we can look for areas of weakness and look for strategies to help and insights to help leaderships lead in different ways. So since we've begun, collecting this data over the course of this year, we've collected about 100 responses. This most recent 100 responses we've collected. What we do is we send out a survey and we ask these 10 questions and allow people to score between one and 10, zero being the lowest, 100 being the highest. And the net hybrid score on average for our benchmark is 82%, which we think is a pretty good uh, number for where we hope people would land. But what's interesting is if you look at the information, this might be helpful for what you're building yourselves in your own environments is if we look at the bottom half, belonging, trust, empathy, goal clarity, and a level playing field, those are the variables that are transferring very nicely from the office first to this forced remote into true hybrid work. So we're pleased to see kind of those are the ones the variables are coming through strong. But if you look at the top five, the five variables that are reported with the greatest level of weakness across the board, Transparent communication, sorry about the typo there. Remote work experience, time and space, which is are we using our time together wisely and are we meeting often enough? Optimism, do I feel optimistic about my future? And boundaries, a real challenge for most people. Those five areas right there across the board where we are finding real time the most weakness in how people are feeling towards their own hybrid work environment. So our strategies we build for leadership teams to understand how they can self-correct and how individuals themselves can self-correct. But what's interesting for us about those five variables is that it is related specifically to the shift, this mass kind of movement and shift into hybrid and remote first ways of working. So that was interesting to show kind of where we're measuring all those areas of weakness for strength. The other thing I wanted to kind of point out is that these are things that we're gathering from when we work with people, not only what are they saying, but what are they not saying? And kind of understanding the words they use, how they're really feeling about the shift. The insights we thought would be interesting are that remote first teams truly place a very high value on quarterly meetups. So I think a lot of remote first companies kind of do, do schedule and follow through on quarterly meets up, quarterly meet up, but they definitely are playing a huge role in how remote first teams can build culture together. A lot of times this focus is on the kind of the social interaction of meeting up with your teammates or meeting people you haven't met before, folks have been recently onboarded, as well as it's an opportunity for people to hold each other accountable to work, to kind of clear grievances, and they're going to kind of connect on a human level. So for any remote first teams, that quarterly meetup seems to be a really good cadence and pace for when to schedule time together. The other thing is that I think that the media would have you believe that everyone wants to be remote first. I think there's a huge value in that and a lot of folks desire that, but it's not for everyone. I would say in all the data that we collect, more often than not, people have a desire to be co-located at least a couple of times a week, which might surprise some or maybe not, not surprise others, but there definitely is a desire from a big chunk of the folks that we've surveyed to have some kind of ability to meet up with their teammates on a more regular basis than once a quarter. 